Hi, this is Trevor Klee, and this is a course called How to Speed Read for Exams and Nothing Else. The course is exactly what it sounds like. It's about speed reading for exams. It's not about speed reading for anything else. Why just for exams? Well, I'll tell you. So, before I get into how to speed read for exams, I want to address why we read slowly, and then my method of speed reading will make more sense. Now, generally speaking, we don't read slowly because of how fast we can literally read the words. We read slowly because we can't predict the sentence or the next word or the paragraph, which slows down our understanding. In other words, we read slowly because of the time we take in between the words, not the time we take reading the words. How do we speed up? Well, we get better at prediction. Let, let me give you some examples to show you what I mean. So, something we can read quickly. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of number four Privet Drive were proud to say that they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. They were the last people you'd expect to be involved in anything strange or mysterious because they just didn't hold with such nonsense. So of course, J.K. Rowling and Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. This is predictable in content. Everyone knows Harry Potter. Potter. It's predictable in word choice. You know, these are all words that a third grader would know, and it's reasonably predictable in sentence structure. The only thing that's a little strange here is thank you very much at the end of the sentence, but that's not going to throw us off too much. As a result, we can read this really quickly, and we can also understand it really quickly. I don't have to take pauses in between sentences. I don't have to take pauses in between words. Once I'm done with this paragraph, I just move on to the next paragraph. Now, Here's something that's a lot less predictable. The truth about the world, he said, is that anything is possible. Had you not seen it all from birth and thereby blooded of its strangeness, it would appear to you for what it is, a hat trick in a medicine show, a fever dream, a trance but populate with chimeras having neither analog nor precedent, an itinerant carnival, a migratory tent show whose ultimate destination after many a pitch and many a mudded field is unspeakable and calamitous beyond reckoning. This is Cormac McCarthy from his fantastic novel, Blood, Mer Blood Meridian. So this is really unpredictable in structure. You know, the second sentence is huge and definitely a run on. Um, it's unpredictable in word choice, you know, but populate, analog, precedent, itinerant, and it's unpredictable in content. You know, you really don't expect the analogies he makes here. That's part of what makes um, Cormac McCarthy such a great author, but it does make it really hard to read his books. Uh, once we hit the middle of this, you know, a trance but populate with chimeras having neither analog nor precedent, it's a slog to make it to the end. And not only is it a slog to make it to the end, but once we do, we're definitely going to have to take some time to understand it. We might even have to read it another couple times. As a result, we read this much more slowly than, you know, Harry Potter. It's much more unpredictable. And as a result, we have to take time after we read it to understand it. Now, how do we take these lessons about predictability and apply it to exams, specifically to speed reading and exams? Well, Short answer, we need to figure out what we need to read for the exam. Then we read only that part and nothing else. And we're not going to read the sentences faster, but we read less and that's just as good. So how do we get better at figuring out what we need to read? Well, let's improve our speed reading with deliberate practice. So. Practice. Do a question and get it wrong. That's what practice is. And that's a large part of the reason why these methods work on exams and not so well on, you know, a novel or scientific paper. Exams have questions, so our practice is made much, much easier by these questions. So when we get a question wrong, we need to ask ourselves two questions. First, what exactly was I supposed to read in order to answer these questions, or this question. Where exactly in the paragraph or in the passage was the answer to my question? Once I figure out here's what I needed to read, second, 
how could I have predicted that I was supposed to read that sentence or that part of the passage? What in the question should have tipped me off to what I was supposed to read? Now, once you ask yourself these two questions, you actually have to answer them. You can't just ask yourself the question and move on. Answer the questions and take notes. Learning from these notes means that you'll learn how to predict. Now, there's an app I've created, 21st Night, available at get21stnight.com, which is a good way to you know, do this sort of deliberate practice, make sure you learn from your notes and make sure you don't forget the lessons you learned from your notes. Uh, check it out if you have trouble remembering you know, um, what you learn or if you're having trouble progressing on your exams. Now, once we get good at predicting the information we need, you know, once we good, get good at seeing a question and saying, okay, here's what I need to know. And then uh, being able to say, you know, here's what I'm looking for in the passage. We need to be able to find that information in the passage quickly. And this we do by skimming. Now skimming, unlike speed reading, you know, when people think speed reading, they normally think, oh, you read faster, but you retain the same amount of information. Skimming, no. Skimming, you read faster and you retain way less information. That's why it's skimming. So my preferred method of skimming, I read the first and last sentence of each paragraph. This is before I look at any of the questions. First and last sentence of each paragraph, get the thesis of each paragraph, and I form a mental map of the passage. This is what the first paragraph is about. This is what the second paragraph is about. This is what third paragraph is about. Just like a couple words for each, you know, maybe a sentence if I have to. Um, from there, topic of each paragraph altogether forms the topic of the, you know, uh, passage. I can then use the questions to predict what I need to find. Now, once I see you know certain keywords in the questions, I have a mental map of the passage, and I'll just point out, I'll be like, oh, okay, I need to go to this paragraph. So that's pretty much it for speed reading for exams. It's pretty easy, right? Speed reading comes from being able to predict what comes next, or being able to predict for exams what you'll need to know and the general structure of what it'll be. If it's you know an MCAT question, it might be something like, oh, I will need to know which amino acid it is. I'm looking for the sort of information that will tell me what sort of amino acid it'll be. If it's the GMAT, you know, I'll need to know a specific detail about this part of history. I'm looking for the part in the passage that'll give me that information. We can get better at that prediction through deliberate practice. Now, if you uh, want to become faster at actually doing each individual question, in other words, finding what you've already predicted you'll need to find, you skim. First sentence, last sentence of each paragraph, get a basic idea of what the paragraph is about, form a mental map of the whole passage, before going on to the questions. All right, that's pretty much it for speed reading for exams. Uh, if you have any questions, you can feel free to email me at info at get21stnight.com. Again, my name is Trevor Klee, and 21st Night is the app I created to help people master exams. Thanks.